Hi everybody, my name is Mike Golding and welcome back to part four of this video where I show you how to make this cool looking music production desk behind me. In this video, I'm gonna show you the finishing stages and how to put all of the parts together to construct the final desk. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. So, I'm gonna be using this router I bought it off of Amazon, I think it was like 50 euros or something. And it came with a number of bits uh, and I'm using a roundover bit here. Uh, I'm certainly no expert with this. So I set this up to do a test route. So I've done a test route here. Because each piece of wood type is different. I've only done it before, I did it before with MDF. And it's completely different the way it works. So if you've never done it on this type of wood or never done it at all, it's very easy. Put it up against the side, run along. Bob's your uncle, it is really fast. Okay, so router always has a direction. This is absolutely crucial. Make sure you're in the right direction. Uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. As I said, do all your test setups for depth and everything beforehand. This is all set here. I've already done that. So let's go, let's do the actual cut. So there it is, that's the whole length done, rounded over. It's really a quick job, it takes five minutes, not even that, it's really quick. Obviously, now I'm gonna go along this whole edge, because it gets relatively rough finish, depending on how fast you go, uh, relatively rough finish, a bit smoother here, I think I was going slower. Um, but that can be sanded out, so I'm gonna go through and sand this whole thing, uh, and then this works over to be finished, other than the fact that I'm gonna stain it a dark, uh, with a dark stain later on. The next piece to do after this work surface is done is to fill in the back. So between this side and that side, I want to fill in a work surface here. So we have this angle issue again. So here is the angle finder, set to zero. We put it in here. We bring it out like so, and there you go. And that actually gives us 111.4 degrees. So that's the angle I'm gonna transpose onto the other side and cut it. Here you go, cut. So the other crucial measurement is of course the length down here, and then we're gonna cut the next side down there. So flip back to this side and obviously that length and the angle there, the length from here to here and we've already cut that angle. So once you've found that length, transpose this angle and we'll have our work surface. Let's give it a go. Okay so we are cut on that side and we're cut on this side. So what we now need to do is to see if it fits. It's a bit hard to do with one person, but uh, let's have a little bit of a test fitting. But roughly it fits. So now what we need to do, we need to put the support bars in for this so that we can then properly just leave it sitting there. So the next job is to make these rails. We know that the angle that we cut on the side of this was 114. Take that angle, 114. What I've done here is I've made a mark, 141 and a half centimeters, so I can make that angle, which is going to be this side because I already had the saw set up for that side so I've cut it exactly the same. I've measured the back side, it's two millimeters short of 176 centimeters, so 176. So I've got my mark exactly the same as before. We're gonna square that mark off 
Now we need to make sure we get our trapeze right. So the outside edge is there, so the trapeze is gonna come this way. So I've already taken the, the angle again. There, just cut across there. Let's go cut it and then do the same and fit it over there. So back over to the desk. I haven't screwed these in yet, so let's just make sure that's all square where it should be. We take a piece of wood that we've cut and we put our rail in. Beautiful, look at that, fits perfectly. We've got half a mil of waggle space, which is going to be perfect. Now, what we need to now firstly do is get the height. So it's pretty easy to do. We just mark the underside of the desk. You know where the underside sits. You just take a level rule and do a level line across. Simple as that. So the next thing is, we draw around it so we know where we are roughly and then we know roughly where we can do our screw holes. Now, thing to bear in mind, this is at an angle. So these screws are gonna come through at this angle. So, when these screws come through at this angle, how much wood have you got? So the tip is to come more into this side than you might normally do if you were coming in straight. If you are coming in straight, you'd be even, probably as I've done it there. But because we come in at an angle, the tip is to come slightly more over and slightly more over than normal. And that gives us just that little bit of extra space over here to do. So let's drill these in. Let's drill these through flat. And then we can come in from the other side. Count the sink the other side as we did when we were making these. Count the sink the other side. Get these drill holes ready and screw in. Let's do it. a trick of when you're doing anything on your own you need someone to support the other end of this big long piece of wood when you're screwing it into one end get a chair rest it on the chair right so that's the two bars fitted and let's test fit that work surface again so all we go there and we have to come back behind it I'm in the way. Slip that in there. Spot on. So, as you can see, it's a monster of a desk. I'm quite happy about that. So, the last stage of this work surface, for me at least, you don't need to do this, you could just use wax, but I'm going to use a dark oak stain. Jacobean dark oak, the recommended method. You put it on the cloth first and you wipe it on. You definitely need disposable gloves. It's pretty easy to do. I've done it a few times before. You definitely need disposable gloves. Let's go. Uh, that's just one coat, a very quick coat, it sinks in pretty fast. I'll leave it and see what it looks like in an hour or so. Uh, maybe, it'll, maybe I'll do another one, but I think it's okay. So let's get on and do the other part. So we'll leave it to dry. I just, I don't want to go too dark. I just want a bit of more contrast between, between this and the white. So that's been stained and left overnight. Give you an idea of the color difference let me show you so we can see here the color difference it's quite a lot of difference so what next well when you put the stain on this now this the original this feels lovely and smooth it's actually really smooth then when you run your hand over the stained version it feels so this needs to be sanded so we're going to sand this but what with we're going to sand it with 180 grade sandpaper. Don't do it with your hand because these are the only pressure points you have. You have gaps in between. So much easier just to use and quicker to use a piece of wood. Wrap it around a piece of wood or a piece of um, 
cork or something. Wrap it round and just run it over. Um, you run it with the grain and it takes this little grain off. Just your standard wax. So we get our cloth, we take an end of our cloth, whatever end we want. Literally scrub, pull out the wax so it's on there and then we rub it onto the surface. And you need to rub it quite hard to just get it into those open bits of wood. As you can see, it goes on quite quickly. You need to really do two coats. This first coat, there's a, you can see because it's still wet or still fresh, there's quite a color difference. That dulls down when it dries right out. So I'm gonna get on and do the rest of all of this. Then I've got to do the other piece of wood, the other work surface, but it's a pretty quick process. Okay, so that's that finished. The whole thing now is waxed. I'm probably gonna leave this overnight. And it, and it dulls down slightly. We then put a second coat on and then it brings it back really to this and then it kind of stays pretty much the same, but obviously it's got that protection. Okay, so let's leave this to dry. In the meantime, let's go back over there and look at these uh, rack mounting rails for the rack mounted units. First thing is to take the rail and just check where it's gonna go. Obviously, we want it to come somewhere just underneath the, the lip. So now the easiest thing to do is to take one of these, you just run that along and you have your parallel line. And we can do that both on both sides and we know it's gonna be identical. Right, so the screws themselves. This piece of MDF is only so wide, 16 mil. So I went to the local hardware store and got some of these short, I think they're 12 mil. I'm gonna sit this here, but use this line as a guide and then mark out where you want the first and last holes to be. Now you don't wanna to go too deep. Obviously you don't wanna come out the other side you really just want a hole to start the screw off to make it much easier to get it in that first piece. Let's try and get that in there and try and hold this up. That's about it. Put it in very, that's gonna go in really easily. Put on a really low ratchet. Let's set it at 10, the ratchet. Okay, that's perfect. So there we go. That's by form with ratchet 10. We need to find roughly where the middle point is. Now this is without a pilot hole, because now I can be a little bit, I can got a little bit more power and I can push it in. And the same up the top. So I've got to repeat this process on this side and then obviously two more times on the other wing. So rails on both sides finished. On this side, and that is as strong as an ox, let me tell you. Two of these for each side and one of these. So I'm gonna put the same on the other side and then we'll see what it looks like. So let's screw that in, let's make sure everything's aligned. Even though it's fixed with the bars at the back, which this one is resting on, you can get a little bit of movement. So let's make sure that this is perfectly aligned before we screw it up from underneath. So primarily we wanna make sure that these edges are tight so that we get a nice clean edge across there. 
and obviously this corner is tight over here. Once I've done that, I can just screw up from underneath. Okay, so un under here, I had previously drilled some holes straight through. So first job is to just countersink this underneath. Get your screw, 50 mil screw. Then you get that from underneath. There you go. So we're gonna do the same, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Okay, so the top, this top is now fixed and very solid. Now I just have to do the same at the back. Let's see if I can get under this desk and show you what I'm up to. So under the desk is exactly the same principle. We just wanna countersink the holes that I've pre-drilled. So you're covered in stuff after crawling around the floor. Okay, so the work surface is on. I can sit on this, no problem. But there's one last job to do and that's to do with cable management. Now, there is a trick with cutting holes as well, particularly in MDF, and that is not to go all the way through. You really want to do about halfway and then come from the other side. So last night, I sanded around, gave it a quick coat of paint. So the build is done. So now we have the chair, which is quite important to see because on its highest point that you can go and and those arms fit under perfectly basically it's the perfect height so this concludes this four part video on how to build this cool music production desk but the videos don't stop there i've got loads more to do as you've heard it's really echoey in this room so i've got acoustic treatment to do on the walls I've got to kit out the whole desk and the studio. So stay tuned for more. I'm also gonna do some music jam sessions, some music tutorials, maybe some video tutorials. There's loads more to come. So subscribe to this channel, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, put them below. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video.